Oh yeah, what is going on everybody? Growth group video time. It is amazing. It is uh, getting warmer out. It's sunny. It's Sunday morning. I'm here with Micah. We are on our way to church to get things rolling this morning. I hope that you guys are uh, having a good week so far. So pumped that you guys are back together and the sun is so bright. Give me that vitamin D. Oh man, and I just wanted to uh, say we're, we're kind of... Uh, what we would call like having a worship night hangover right now because the worship night 10 year anniversary was last night. It was amazing. Two, two solid hours. We didn't really think it was going to go that long, but, uh, it was awesome. And if you did, if you missed it, uh, man, get to the next one, check out the live stream that we did, but man, excited for what God is doing in your group this week. And, uh, we are in the last week of control freaks and I kind of like indicated that maybe I'm starting off a new series as well. Um, and so this whole week was um, was kind of like that culmination of, of Control Freaks, which has been a really great, challenging series. Um, so I wanted to start out today with your group to basically, um, yeah, ask a question that I think would be fun. So um, when is the last time that you, or when do you, have you ever received credit for something? That made you feel really great, and maybe the second part of that question would be: uh, When did you receive credit? It fit, made you feel really good, but you had to admit that it wasn't you that got that did it. Um, you know, so we are so wired to want promotions and raises and compliments and just being able to like be, uh, yeah, just encouraged in that way and so we look to get the credit a lot of times so just kind of like making it real a little bit just talking about like a time when you maybe you did accomplish something that was great and you received credit for it um, maybe when you were a kid or maybe recently um, and maybe the the tweak to that is if you've ever received credit where it really wasn't yours uh, to take and you had to um, say something did you say something or did you just take the credit so uh, go ahead and kick off group with that and uh, we're gonna go in and get things going so we'll see you guys soon pause the video Whoa, what's going on everybody? A little change of scenery for you. I am actually at Midway Airport um, heading out to see my aunt and uh, she's in her 80s now and uh, it's uh, something that my brother and I do every year is to go out there and visit her. Uh, it has to be in Florida, you know, so I'm just going to rough it for a few days down there and it's like 80 degrees I think and so it's going to be rough so be praying for me. Um, but it's also like 60 degrees or 55 degrees in Chicago so not too shabby. Um, but yeah, we wanted to get back to the discussion. Um, first ever time I'm actually like doing this in the, in the airport, which is kind of fun. Um, but, uh, so I just got kicked out of the spot that I was doing the video in. Um, but, uh, no, it's okay. Actually, I didn't, I was just messing with you and my computer was glitching in that spot. So I just gotta, I had to kind of reconnect and, uh, keep going. So last week we talked about in the message, we talked about this idea that God gets the glory you don't. And the whole process and the whole idea around how our lives are set up to uh, work, strive, earn, do, um, achieve for our own gain, for our own, the compliments, the praise, the recognition, the promotions, the raise, the grade, the degree, whatever it might be. And we, we talked about this dichotomy between how the word of God speaks to us about what is important and how God gets the glory and we don't and how we, uh, we kind of live in the opposite of that so often. And so I wanted just to actually revisit the passage that I used as kind of a basis um, on Sunday. And that was Matthew uh, chapter five, uh, verses 14 through 16. And it's a very common verse that, a set of verses that you guys maybe have heard before. Um, which is fine, but I would love for you to reread that together as a group. And then I would like to just see if there could be some discussion around um, some of the aspects that I pointed out in the message and to go deeper on that. So first off, I had talked about that, um, you, you know, Jesus points out good deeds are the things that um, we should be doing. And so um, that's number one. Number two is kind of the motive for doing those good deeds is important. Jesus is always about the heart, always concerned about the heart. And so the motive 
for doing a good deed is important. And then lastly, the fact that the result of the good deed isn't that we get credit, it's that God is glorified, that, that people actually glorify God and uh, those around us that see that and see those good works. So here's how I would love for you to discuss this amidst anything else that you guys um, feel like is, is there and you would like to discuss is what is, like if you were to rank those things, what is the most difficult part of kind of like what Jesus is throwing down? Is it really doing the good deed? Like um, you just find that, you know, maybe it's not that you do bad things all the time, but it's hard to categorize some of what you do on a routine basis as, you know, good. You know, that I get up, I go to school, I get up, I go to work. Um, I just, I don't know that I'm, sensing them going above and beyond to do something um, good, uh, I guess. Uh, maybe that's a struggle. Maybe, maybe what's challenging to you is the motive for doing these things. Um, or maybe what's difficult is really remembering that the glory really needs to be going to God for those things that you do. So take a minute right now. Um, go ahead and you're going to pause the video and you're going to talk about Matthew 5, 14 through 16 um, and just talk through that from your perspective and what is uh, really most challenging to, for you and why that is. So you can go ahead, pause the video right now and discuss away. Yeah, yeah. So for this next segment, what we're wanting to do is to turn our eyes toward and our focus on really taking some time to glorify God by expressing it. One of the things that I said in the message is that God designed us in a way that our, our joy and our enjoyment of something isn't really complete until we express it. So that can go for um, how cute a baby is. You could think it, but it doesn't really complete that circle until you say it. Uh, it might be when your favorite uh, baseball team hits a home run you know, or your favorite player hits home run. And it's like, oh, that was cool in your head. But until you like shout out, out, out loud, it really doesn't complete your enjoyment for that. In the same way, we can be living for God. We can be even trying to follow his, his lead on a lot of stuff. But until we really express it, we don't connect that, that, that full circle. So I'd love for you guys to just organically kind of like start to think about and then express in your group, and maybe, I don't know, if you have a piece of paper or um, if you have a whiteboard, uh, that you could write these things down. There are things that you would say that you would say you want to give honor and praise and glory to God about. Things that um, maybe he has done in your life. Maybe it's something that is true of him in scripture. Maybe it's something that would be... Um, an experience that you had that God did something. Maybe it's something that someone else experienced and you're able to give praise to God for that. And so I just love for you to do that because I think that's an act of worship, right? Where we're beginning to say, okay, God, this is why I'm honoring you. This is why I'm wanting to give you glory right now. And, you know, for me, um, I think the word that comes to me for what I want to give God honor for is for his faithfulness. Um, many of you know my story, um, but you know, throughout my life, the one thing that I can say through all the ups and the downs is that God has been faithful and I just want to praise him and give him glory for that. So maybe there, maybe that's you. Maybe you're like, God has been with me this whole time. He's been faithful, but maybe you can t spend some time to really personalize that in your group and create like brainstorm, like a list as long as you can. And um, as many things and many words as you can to give God glory. I believe that that would be just such a blessing to him and a blessing to your group. So go ahead, pause the video and brainstorm away. Let's do this. All right, we are down to it. This is our last segment um, from Midway Airport, Chicago, Illinois. Um, I'd love for you to send, set, spend the last uh, bit of time with your group uh, talking about the other passage I mentioned in, in, in the message, which is 1 Peter 4, verse 10, is the main verse that I want you to look at, and, and really turn this outward. And what it says, and I'll have you read it again, but each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. And I think that that is where I'd love for you to um, 
focus on in this last segment is how do you take um, how do you start to describe some good deeds that that you are that are on your heart that you may want to do for someone else um, maybe it's someone else in your group maybe it's for your group leader maybe it's for your neighbor or maybe somebody that you go to school with or someone you work with but maybe something that you've had on your heart that and maybe maybe it's something your whole group can get behind um, maybe your whole group has seen a need maybe within second place or maybe um, in one of your lives some of the families that are represented around the room um, maybe a, an extension of that somebody that you um, may all know or somebody in your group knows that is is needing something and can be served somehow I would love for you guys to go ahead and brainstorm that and I think yeah I think it would be like plus five points if it's a, some, something your group can do to begin to serve someone or a, another another group or another family and um, really in that way do that not because you want to do something good but because you want God to be glorified and so um, yeah I think that that would be like a way for us to experience the scripture and to live it out and I'm excited to hear what kind of ideas you guys come up with so uh, super so glad that you guys are together in group again uh, this is our last week of Control Freaks, and it's very likely that I have kicked off a new series um, because this whole idea of God alone gets the glory, the Latin term being soli deo gloria, is also kind of one of five specific things that the early church reformers really um, kind of focused on. And so, I don't know, I'm kind of going to take a few days here and, and think about it and pray about it. And that may be where we go over the next few weeks um, because I think they're powerful statements. And um, this one, though, I think is super good to start off with, that God would get the glory. So don't, don't forget this week, um, the question we're asking is, what would honor God the most? What would God honor God the most? So when it comes to your... Uh, your finances, when it comes to relationships, whatever it may be, remember to ask that question this week. But for this last segment, brainstorm away and think about what you can do to serve others. And we'll see you very soon. I hope to see you this weekend. And uh, I'll be struggling this week in the 80 degree weather. You guys have a great week too, wherever you're going to be. We'll see you guys soon.